Hello, Room 19. I hope you're ready to continue with our chapters. We are now on Chapter 16 of Blood on the River, Jamestown, 1607. Great blame and imputation was laid upon me by them for the loss of the two men, which Indians slew. In Somich, they purposed to dispose me. It is either Richard or God in his mercy who trips me. I sprawl on the ground, my face in the dirt. Grab him, Master Archer orders. Run, Richard cries. But before I can scramble to my feet, Reverend Hun lifts me by one arm and holds me fast. He is a boy, he says slowly and firmly to Master Archer. Leave him be. I will deal with him. Master Archer wipes his bloody hand with his handkerchief. He gives me one last disgusting look, then turns to go disgusted look. Reverend Hunt drags me with him to the chapel. Richard follows. I'm sorry, Reverend Hunt, I say as I struggle to keep up with his long strides. He is gripping my arm so tightly it hurts. He is focusing his anger and most of that focus is going into my arm. He plots me down on a long bench in the chapel. Do not leave until you have prayed long and hard. Pray to curb your temper. Pray for humility. You will need the, that desperately if you become the servant of one of the gentlemen. I hop to my feet. I will not serve one of those men. They are criminals. Then I realize what he is saying. He is assuming that a, at sunup, Captain Smith will be hanged, and I will become another man's servant. Are you just going to let them kill him? I cry. Reverend Hunt rubs his temples. I have no authority here, he says quietly. I shake my head and sink back onto the log. Richard sits next to me. I had always assumed that Reverend Hunt held the highest authority, the authority of God. Then can you pray for another miracle, Reverend? Richard asks. Reverend Hunt looks up at him, his eyes bright for a moment. He nods, yes, he says, I will. The three of us are quiet, lost in our own prayers. I pray to learn to curb my anger but I do not ask for the humility to serve another master. When we leave the chapel, we find the soldiers, laborers, gathered at the cook fire. They are talking in hushed tones, their eyes shifting. We draw closer and hear their plan. There are a dozen gentlemen and over 20 of us. Yes, they have plenty of weapons, but we will have the element of surprise. Henry wants to simply slit the gentlemen's throats while they sleep but some of the others will want an all-out battle, a war. Reverend Hunt scowls, no, no killing, he says. A war amongst ourselves will be the end of us and the end to the colony. We will not even have enough men left to fend off an Indian attack. But the men ignore him. They want blood, and if it'll save Captain Smith, so do I. I grow wary of listening to the men argue about their plans. I nudge Richard and we leave to walk down to the river. That afternoon, sun is low. A breeze has lifted and the river has crippled, sorry, ripples over its surface. Do you think their plans will work? Richard asks me. I shake my head. A lot of men will die. Maybe you and I will die. And yet if we do nothing, we both know that will happen tomorrow morning. We will watch Captain Smith climb up the ladder to the gallows. Watch them slip the noose around his neck. When they shove him off the ladder, the weight of his body will jerk his neck against the noose. Our only hope will be for his neck to, to last, to break. I have seen hangings where a man does not make it. A thin layer of ice has crushed over the water along the shoreline. I press on it with the toe of my shoe until it breaks like glass, making a star of thin lines. The wind is stiff now and chills me right through my clothes. When I first heard about the Renault colony disappearing, I wondered how it could have happened so quickly. Yet here we are, down to fewer than 40 men from 105, about to kill one an another one off. I sat down heavily on the riverbank. Something on the horizon down river catches my attention. I blink and rub my eyes. It is a ship. The low winter sun has turned her sails to gold, and she is gliding towards us on the wind. 
My mouth goes dry. Is this the Spanish ship we have been dreaming and dreading? Come to attack and kill us all? They will have an easy task. Can you see her flags yet? I asked slowly. Not yet, says Richard. His eyes are on the approaching ship as well. A vulture circles overhead. Then I see it. The sun catching it just right to show us. The blue, white, and red. It's an English ship, I shout. Could it be Captain Newport after all this time, Richard cries. Reverend Hunt's words echo in my head. I have no authority here. But Captain Newport does have authority here, and I'm sure he will not let them hang Captain Smith. I strain my neck trying to see who is on board. Is there a one-armed man? The ship glides closer. Shouldn't we go to tell them a ship is here, Richard asks? Not until I see who, is cap who the captain is, I say. I want to know if Captain Smith is saved. Then I see him standing at the bow, looking toward the shore, the one-armed captain of the ship. Richard and I take off running up the hill to the fort. You did it, Reverend Hunt. I shout at the top of my lungs. You got your miracle. What a chapter. So it looks like John Smith will be saved by their, pro their prior leader, Captain Ratcliffe. All right, let's continue with prepositions. I wanted to break down the three different types of prepositions in this video. So prepositions of place and direction. These prepositions include in, into, at, on, for, above, under, below, beyond. And I like to think about these prepositions as a box. If you had a box, all of these prepositions could be like in the box, over the box, around the box, under the box, through the box, etc. The next type of preposition is prepositions of time and date. These prepositions include at, on, in, by, from, to, till, until, during, for, since, after. For example, I am leaving at noon. I went there on Wednesday. And let's go with since this afternoon, I have read two books. The other type of preposition is of travel and movement. These prepositions include from, to, by, on, into, onto, at, out, out, of, and off. Our discussion question for today is, Samuel can no longer contain his anger at the end of chapter 15. Do you think Samuel is right or wrong to throw the rock at Master Archer? How did that action make you feel? I wanted to talk about one other form of go government. Our form of government is a democracy, but there is another form out there called a dictatorship. A dictatorship is when a government system has only one person and that where the person in power does not have to care what the people want. He makes up his own decisions. He works as an individual. And there's two types. There's an autocracy, which one person has all the power. You might have heard of Fidel Castro, and he was the dictator of Cuba, and he had an autocracy. An oligarchy is where a few people are in power. And that sometimes can happen in, with the king systems in old England. I hope you've enjoyed this chapter. We're actually almost at the end of summer. I hope you enjoy. Take care.